heard from the Lord today. Don't play games. I'm super excited. Hey, let's do it. Luke's Gospel. Open up your Bible. Luke's Gospel. We're in a series entitled, We're Outside. Now, if you're hood, it's really called We Outside, but it was birthed out of a colloquialism in New York, and it was after the pandemic, and people were stuck, and then they started saying, We Outside. So that's the title of our series, uh, our focus, our thematic thrust as we approach the resurrection is Christology. In every miracle we've talked about, everything that Jesus has done, it hasn't been within the confines of a temple or a tabernacle, but what we preached about this month was Jesus doing miracles outside. When he met that sassy sister from Samaria, he met her at a well outside. Uh, how many people were blessed last week when, when, when that paralyzed man, they had to go outside and, and lower him down to get to Jesus. I believe there's a word from the Lord today. Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 30. Uh, everybody who's watching online, we honor and celebrate you. We honor that for our Rock E campus. Verse 30 says, Jesus replied with a story. He said, a Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho, and he was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, and left him half dead beside the road. By chance, a priest came along, but when he saw the man lying there, he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. The Levite, or the temple assistant, walked over, and, and he looked at him lying there but he also passed by on the other side then a despised Samaritan came along when he saw the man he felt compassion for him going over to him the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them then he put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn where he took care of him Verse 31 says, the priest came along. He saw him lying there, but he crossed to the other side. The temple assistant, he walked over and looked at him, but he also went to the other side. But it was the Samaritan that when he saw him, he felt compassion, and he went over to him, and he did something about it. Uh, if you're not too mean, help me preach this morning. Tell somebody next to you, walk this way. Go ahead and tell them, uh, walk this way. You may be seated in God's house. In 1983, uh, Joseph Simmons... Daryl McDaniels and Jam Master J emerged from Hollis, Queens, New York to form a group by the name of Run DMC. Uh, Eminem, when he inducted Run DMC into the Hall of Fame, what Eminem says is all it took was two turntables and a microphone to change the world. Uh, recognize Run DMC. Uh, I, I don't like the way the old people didn't get loud for Run DMC. Like you didn't have a, a, a four finger ring, like you didn't have a gold chain, like you didn't have the hat. Uh, clearly, clearly, uh, Brother Cornelius was aware that I was preaching this today because I look in the back and he has the hat that Run DMC used to wear. Amen. Some of us got stuck in the 80s and they came out in Jesus name. I think he pulled up in a DeLorean this morning. As a matter of fact, amen, he's going back to the future. Run DMC, don't get it twisted. Before there was Migos, before there was uh, Cardi B, there was Run DMC. Run DMC was the first rap group to appear on Saturday Night Live. Yeah, Run DMC was the first rap group to cover, to grace the cover of Rolling Stone magazine. Run DMC was the, the first rap group to get a Lifetime Achievement Grammy Award. While they experienced critical acclaim eventually they were relatively arcane initially uh, despite their success they were largely ignored by mainstream media like MTV they were typically playing uh, rock and roll music and they weren't really feeling hip-hop at the time but one day in uh, 1986 legendary Def Jam producer Rick Rubin he gets on the phone and he calls the manager of Aerosmith and says uh, would you all be interested in a collaboration uh, Aerosmith tried to act funny like they didn't need a collaboration but the truth is uh, their career was starting to plummet uh, Aerosmith they were in a slump the sales had declined uh, the group was ravaged by addictions and the last hit that Aerosmith actually recorded was 10 years prior to this phone call when they recorded the original cover of Walk This Way. 
uh, ultimately, despite their initial skepticism, they agreed to collaborate with Run DMC. And as they say, the rest is history. Uh, this collaboration was mutually beneficial. This was the first rap single on Billboard's top 10. This album went platinum and Run DMC emerged as the top selling hip hop group. Anybody ever seen the video Walk This Way? Uh, the video Walk This Way goes, goes crazy. Like the video actually crystallizes and captures the sentiments of the song. There are two groups, they are two races, they are two genres, and they're separated, come here, by a wall. Uh, 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 ultimately, the climax, the apex of the video is when they decide to break the wall and go from competition to collaboration. Come here. You know I didn't come to church to preach about Run DMC. Uh, Ephesians says, for Christ himself was brought peace to us. He united the Jews and the Gentiles into one people in his own body on the cross. Here it is. He broke down the wall of hostility that separated us. I, I wish there was somebody who could have church with me at 9 a.m. I was going in the opposite direction. But a God who was sinless approached me who was sinful on Calvary's cross. He rent the veil from top to bottom. The wall was separated and because I couldn't walk towards him, he walked towards me. Uh, uh, now I can come boldly to the throne of grace. Push somebody and say, walk this way. Uh, I don't care what you did, walk this way. I don't care how many times you did it, walk this way. I don't care if you messed up last night. You can come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain help and mercy in the time of trouble. Oh, my God. Uh, uh, Luke, Luke, you realize that there's an audience that's attracted to your voice. Uh, Luke has uh, an interesting perspective, gospel synoptic, a synchronized optical view of Jesus Christ. You got Matthew, who's trying to appeal to a Jewish audience. You got uh, Mark, who is the Marshawn Lynch of the gospels. He's about that action boss. Amen. Uh, uh, then you have Luke, who is appealing to a Gentile audience. What he wants you to know is not only is Jesus omniscient, not only is Jesus omnipresent, not only is Jesus omnipotent, but Jesus comes for outcasts. Uh, 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 that don't mean much to some of you all because you've got it right your whole life, but I'm grateful that I serve a God who comes for outcasts. Uh, come here, uh, Luke, he writes certain things in his gospels that are precluded or excluded from other gospels. He wants you to know that Jesus will heal 10 lepers. The Bible says that there were 10 lepers. Recognize that leprosy is likened as unto sin. Leprosy, it has multiple stages. The first stage, of course, is when it's undetectable which means you can have leprosy, but no one know it because it's undetectable. But in its second stage, it progresses towards sensory loss. Yeah, yeah, sensory loss is when you're not sensitive to the things of God like you used to be. You, you used to have an urgency. Sometimes God says, uh, you were closer to me when you were broke. It, it was when I blessed you that you got, you got, you got it twisted and, and allowed some distance to come in. It's sensory loss. And, and the last stage is, of course, uh, limbs start to fall off. Yeah, well, yeah, 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 yeah. Your life starts to fall off. But, but what Jesus does is he says, I want these lepers who are outcasts, I want you to go show yourself to the priest. Now, I have a problem with that because uh, you're only supposed to show yourself to the priest after you've been healed. But what Jesus says is, uh, don't let your diagnosis dictate your behavior. Uh, Jesus says, actually, let your behavior uh, dictate and speak back to your diagnosis. So even if you're dysfunctional, I need you to behave in a way that says I am functional. I know you were traumatized but I need you to behave in a way that suggests that I will become emotionally whole. I'm, I'm seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. The Bible says let the weak say that I'm strong. I, I, I want to talk to somebody who ain't lost weight yet. Go ahead and tell your neighbor I'm skinny in Jesus name. Go ahead. Uh, 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 behold now are we. Not, not, not in a moment. Now 
now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear what we shall be walk in your revelation until your revelation reflects your reality you y'all ain't ready for me at 9 a.m. I, I said walk in your revelation until your revelation is a reflection of your reality he says I want you to walk as if you're healed and the Bible says as they went I don't know which step it was but there was some step along the journey when they stepped out of leprosy and stepped into healing go ahead and tell your neighbor walk this way if, if you keep walking there will be a moment when you will step out of poverty into abundance you will step out of low self-esteem into high self-esteem tell somebody I'm walking I'm walking it out as they went they were healed Luke Luke is so cold he wants to teach you about prodigal sons he tells you he comes for outcasts that even when you've left prematurely even when you've spent all you had in riotous living even when you find yourself in a pig pen he's waiting on you to come to yourself because the moment you come to yourself push somebody and tell them you can always come home yeah Huh, Corey, you remember that Martin Corey when, when, when he told he told him in the judge he told him he said girl you can always come home amen I, I want you to catch this that when you come home God says I have a ring waiting on you ring is covenant I have a robe waiting on you to cover everything that you've done watch this and I got a party waiting on you the party can't start until you walk in he, he says you can always come home Jesus lets you know I come for outcasts this is the one that messed me up he comes for uh, this prostitute I was like ooh Ooh, Jesus, kind of spicy. Amen. Uh, uh, he, uh, there, there was a Pharisee. Read it in your Bible. There's a Pharisee who invites Jesus to lunch. He invites Jesus to lunch, and Jesus goes to the Pharisee's house. But not only does Jesus and the Pharisee have lunch, but also the prostitute pulls up. The prostitute pulls up, washes Jesus' feet with her tears. Uh, not only did she wash his feet with her tears, but she kissed his feet and then had the nerve to pour perfume on his feet. The Bible says that the Pharisee said to himself, you missed it, the Pharisee didn't say it out loud, but he said it to himself. Clearly, Jesus ain't a prophet because if he was a prophet, he wouldn't be allowing this, this, this prostitute to be in this proximity with him. But the Bible says that Jesus responded to the Pharisee's thought. He, he, he spoke back to his thinking and he said, uh, uh, let's have a conversation. Let's suppose somebody owes you $500 and let's suppose somebody owes you $5,000. let us say you forgive both of them their debt. Who is going to be more grateful, the one that owed $500 or the one that owed $5,000? Uh, uh, he told the Pharisee that when, when I got here, you didn't offer me nothing to drink, but she over here washing my feet with her tears. When I got here, you didn't even give me a cup customary kiss she kissed my feet you didn't even anoint my head she anointed my feet with perfume in other words instead of criticizing her you should be copying her <laughs> uh, your level of experience dictates your level of expression you missed what I just said uh, you can tell who ain't been delivered from much because they sit here like they doing God a favor but is there anybody in this house who said I didn't mess some stuff up and I shouldn't even be here today so what I got to do is I got to open up my mouth and bless God tell your neighbor my praise ain't optional yeah it's mandatory I, I'm a witness I'm a witness when I think of the goodness of Jesus don't do it 9 a.m. and all he's done for me my soul cries out if he delivers you from little you praise cute but if he delivers you from hell and high water you gotta open up your mouth and say I didn't mess around and gave you two sermons. Uh, uh, be seated. He, he comes. He comes for outcasts. He comes for outcasts. He he comes for this tax collector by the name of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus is 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 not only is he a tax collector, but he's also short. You missed your shout. He's 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 a tax collector, but he's also short. Yeah yeah. Ugh. I'm gonna give it to you again. He's a tax collector, but he but he's short. Don't act like you've been tall. The Bible says, "For all have sinned and come." short of the glory of God. But what Zacchaeus does is he says, I'm going to instigate my breakthrough. He, he sees a tree and he runs up and he climbs the sycamore tree. Jesus makes a connection with Zacchaeus. Watch this from the tree. He, he makes a connection with Zacchaeus from the tree. Uh, uh, don't act like it wasn't a tree on Calvary's cross that got you out of the sin that you were in. Jesus, Jesus, he saves lepers. He saves prodigals. He saves prostitutes. He saves tax collectors. He saves I refuse to allow salvation to be sequestered. 
I refuse to allow isolation to interfere with me having an impact. He would not allow boundaries to block breakthroughs. So Jesus walked toward us. My question is, if he walked towards you, how come you can't walk towards somebody else? Uh, let me give you some context uh, so you respect the text. The, the Bible says in Luke chapter 9, one day Jesus calls the 12. It's so cold bloody. He calls the 12 and he gave them power and authority to cast out demons and heal diseases. Oh, God, I don't want to mess with that. Uh, uh, he gives them power and authority. That's the reason why you need Jesus' name because that gives you your authority. But you also need the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit gives you power. When you have the Holy Spirit and the name, push them out and tell them, I'm armed and dangerous. Uh, armed and dangerous. <laughs> then he sent them out to tell everyone about the kingdom of God. Ten and one, after these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them by two before his face in every city, a uh, place where he was about to go. Uh, there's no wasted ink in the Bible. Come close. In chapter nine, he sends out 12. In chapter 10, he sends out 70. In chapter 9, he sends out 12. In chapter 10, he sends out 70. 12, 12 tribes of Israel. Jesus tells the 12 in Matthew, listen, don't go to the Gentiles or the Samaritans. I'm sending y'all to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. In chapter 10, he sends out 70. Luke is the only one who shows you Jesus sending out the 70. Because when he sends out 12, it's for the Jewish people. When he sends out 70, it's for Gentiles. Come here. 70 means it's time to expand. 12 is for church people. Your problem is your ministry is only tailored for church people. Uh, 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 your ministry is bound by a building. But Jesus says, I'm trying to expand. I need some people who will stand like Paul and say, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to the Jew first and also to the Greek. The goal is not preservation. The goal is expansion. Come here. Preservation is preoccupied with the past. Expansion is about the future. Preservation is tapped into reality. Expansion is tapped into possibility. Okay, y'all not feeling me. Uh, anybody remember Tupperware? Forty and over. Everybody else don't even talk to me right now. Anybody know about Tupperware? I, I, I'm not talking about Ziploc and a little blue. I'm talking about Tupperware. I, I mean, where you got to push the thing down in the middle and and it go all around, t t Tupperware, Tupperware. You put things in a container that you want to preserve. The only issue with preservation is it can only be preserved for so long. Because when what's inside is fresh, uh, it has a desire to expand. But when the container is pushed down on it, it blocks the expansion and it gets stale and it gets moldy. You're frustrated because you have expansion on the inside of you, but you're surrounded by people who are containers. Woo! Push both neighbors and say, give me some room. Give me uh, give, 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 give me give, give me some room. Can I can I go deeper? Can I go deeper? Uh, your kingdom mindset is actually a reflection of your personal mindset. The way you feel about the kingdom of God is actually a reflection of how you feel about yourself. Michael Gerber says, and I quote in his book E Myth, he says, "The work we do is actually a reflection of who we are. If we're sloppy at it, it's because we're sloppy inside." If we're late at it, it's because we're late inside. Go ahead and tell your neighbor, it do start at nine. Go ahead and let her know real quick. Not nine-ish. It, it do, it. I was out there greeting. I was like, ain't nobody coming today, Jesus. It's daylight savings again. <laughs> Clearly, they think it's nine-ish in Jesus' time. Uh, 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 come here, come here. If we're bored by it, it's because we're bored inside with ourselves, not with the work. The most menial work can be a piece of art when done by an artist. So the job here is not outside of ourselves, but inside of ourselves. 
how we do our work becomes a mirror of how we are inside, unquote. In order to expand the kingdom of God, you got to first expand you. The goal is not just surviving in this season. The goal is actually thriving now. Me just being saved is not enough in this season. The goal is for me to save everyone and everything connected to me. Good enough is not good enough. Push somebody and tell them I'm allergic to average. Go ahead and tell them. Uh, I don't meddle with mediocrity. Everything connected to me is expanding. My mind is expanding. My money is expanding. My heart is expanding. Somebody shout expansion. These were the instructions that Jesus gave them. Luke 10 and 2. He said the harvest, King James, you grew up on that. So did I. The harvest is plentiful. NLT. The harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who's in charge of the harvest and ask him to send workers. I'm trying all month long to the best of my ability to incite and instigate you to have a mindset that says, let's go get this work. Let's go get this harvest. The world is desperate for revival. There are 7.8 billion people on the planet and the gospel needs to be wherever people are. Who's in jeopardy of going to hell because you won't help? Yep, yep, yep. Pray for me. My wife and I, uh, we, we run out of shows. I told you we watch FBI and Law and Order. Uh, but this week, they told me I had to fire my wife off the force because she falls asleep on every case. In Jesus' name. So I told her last night, I said, they told me to tell you, amen, that uh, it's not going to work out any longer. And she's like, shut up, babe. Shut up, babe. I said, because I can't be in the middle of a stakeout and you over here sleep on the couch. I said, so me and Benson and Detective Tutu Wola, we're going to have to move on from you. I said, but it hurts us more than it hurts you. But it's been 25 seasons and you still falling asleep on cases. If I can study a sermon and do a case, then you can surely. What was my point? Who's in jeopardy of going to hell because I won't help? The harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. Their conversion at some point has to be more important than your comfort. Like for real, for real. I, I'm not, I refuse to raise a generation of selfish Christians. Yeah, who only care about getting your mind right, your money right. No, I need you to care about everybody else. I need you to be like, as for me and my house. Yeah, for the promises unto you and your children. Their salvation is more important than me sitting. Help want it. They over there hiring in the kingdom. Help want it. What are the qualifications? Love God, love people. Come here. Next Sunday, we are here. Tell somebody, we really outside next week. If you don't come to church next week, I'm going to pull up on your house with an eviction notice. I ain't never kicked nobody out the church, but it'll be a first time for everything. I'm going to knock on your door and say, thank you. Uh, you've been fired in Jesus' name. Amen. Because next week, you are going to another level. You get here at 830, we're going to hand you a free t-shirt. The t-shirt is going to say, we outside. We are going to serve our city. What is the assignment when you come next week? The assignment is simple. It is twofold. Number one, we're going to rob hell. Number two, we're going to make heaven full. Slap somebody and tell them we outside. <laughs> Woo! I can't wait for next week. Next week going to be a whole problem. While everybody else got palm trees and branches and celebrating Palm Sunday, we're going to pre-record a message. You're going to catch that online. But we're going to be out here in the parking lot with our t-shirts like an army. Tell somebody we soldiers up in here. Yeah, people who are sick are going to be made well. People who are broken are going to be made whole. We're going to be like the Samaritan woman and say, come see a man who told me all that I was. The testimony of the Rock Church will be that of the New Testament church in the book of Acts. These are they who turn the world upside down Brentwood we coming Oakley we coming Antioch we coming Pittsburgh tell somebody we outside verse 17 says the 70 return with joy y'all missed it they, they went and did something not ready aim fire some of y'all been aiming since high school tell somebody shoot your shot they came back with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. 
Instruction minus implementation is just inspiration. Some of you all replace your drug addiction with a church addiction. <sighs> you just come to get high on Sunday and you ain't going to do nothing. But instructions plus implementation, let's have church, equals impact. The kingdom suffers violence and the violent take it by force. Fixing to ain't going to get it in this season. I'm about to, ain't going to work in this season. Faith without works is dead. Get outside of the prison of procrastination. Action activates your assignment. Tell somebody it ain't going to work till you work it. Yeah, you over here, you over here uh, talking yourself out of everything that God is trying to talk you into. You ever meet the rapper that ain't got no flows, but all they do is got ad libs? Check, check. Check, check. You ever meet the person who stretched the whole exercise? I'm going to confess because confession is good for the soul. I was in the gym this week. I was at the Orange Theory. And it was like burpees. I was like, ooh. Hmm. Like, right now? She was like, right now. I was like, okay. Okay, alrighty. Burpees. Burpees. Down, back up, down, so down and then back up. Let me see the screen, what they say. Down and back up. And I was like, mmm. I went and got sanitation wipes for everybody. I was like, yo, you need a wipe? You need a wipe? The teacher said, Chris, pick up the dumbbell. I said, all right, all right, all right. God is giving you an assignment and you over here analyzing it. God says, I don't need your analysis. I need your obedience. Come here, come here, come here. It ain't going to work until you work it. You will receive power after that. The Holy Ghost has come upon you. You got power that you ain't even activated yet. Behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Why are you letting demons run your life that you got the power to cast out? Tell somebody, I believe in counseling and casting. I believe in therapy and theology. I wish a demon would run up on me. I wish a demon would run up on my church. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imagination. There's some stuff you living with that you could have cast out six weeks ago. Finally, I'm at my message. One day, an expert in religious law stood up to test Jesus by asking him the question. He said, teacher, what do I have to do to inherit eternal life? Jesus is so cold-blooded, he, he applies the Socratic method. He answers a question with a question. He said, so what, what, what does the law of Moses say? How do you read it? The man answered, you must love God with your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and you must love your neighbor as yourself. Uh, right, Jesus told him, do this and you'll live. And now watch, here's the intent of his heart being revealed. The man wanted to justify his actions, so he asked Jesus, you know what, who is my neighbor? Yeah, he tried to test Jesus, but Jesus is giving him revelation through reflection. Love, he says, love the Lord God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Watch this. When you haven't received love properly, it's difficult to give love properly. If, if you believe God sees you as condemned, chances are you see yourself as condemned. Okay, can, can I be transparent? I, I grew up in church, so subsequently, I didn't see him as a good, good father. I saw him more as my probation officer. So my relationship with God, it was often legalistic, and it was based upon legislation, and, and, it, and it wasn't always based on love. Yeah, I grew up in a church where if you missed a fast day, you were going to hell. Like, like you missing Sunday, y'all miss, y'all tripped me out with this optional Sunday stuff. Like, like I don't think I missed Sunday in 17 years. Amen. Uh, even my wife said we can't go on vacation till after church. That's just the way he lives. We'll be leaving after church. We'll be coming right before. Like, 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 like I grew up in a legislative context. And if you believe God sees you as condemned, then you're not only will you condemn yourself, but you condemn other people. 
Religion makes you believe that your relationship with God is based upon your ability to keep the rules. So now, what you have is a performance-based relationship with God. If God doesn't do what you want him to do, when you want him to do it, and how you want it done, you subsequently believe God doesn't love you. And now, you pitch a tantrum and you withdraw because your relationship with God is performance-based. You grew up on when praises go up, blessings come down. So the moment praises go up and burdens come down, you bounce. Come here, come here, come here. Not only do you have a performance-based relationship with God, but you also have a performance-based relationship with yourself. If you fill out the application and they don't accept it and they reject it, you talk crazy to yourself. If, if, if you post something and it don't get likes, you delete it real quick because you don't want to feel like a failure. It's performance-based. You talk down to yourself. You criticize yourself. The truth is no one talks worse to you than you do to yourself. Not only do you have a performance-based relationship with yourself, but now it leaks out and you have a performance relationship with other people. All of your relationships are surface and superficial. Subsequently, you don't even know it, but you become inadvertently, you're now a clout chaser. So you overlook the relationships that have significance and you chase the ones that have status. So you only want to be close to people who can bless you. As a matter of fact, you're so fragile, you can't receive feedback. So you put yourself in an echo chamber of cheerleaders who only validate your dysfunction. As a result, all of your relationships become transactional. But when you realize how God loves you, it will revolutionize how you love yourself. It will revolutionize how you love other people. God says, my love is not based on your ability. It's based on my identity. God is love. So love is not just what he does. Love is who he is. Yeah. Yeah. One song changed my life. I was listening to Israel and the song, I Receive Your Love, came on. And I was over here 25 years old and tears are flowing down my eyes because I had been in church all my life, but I hadn't tasted his love to the degree that he wanted me to taste it. God says, I don't love you when you get it right. I loved you when you messed it up while you were yet sinners. In due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Tell somebody I'm already loved. The lawyer had correct orthodoxy, but incorrect orthopraxy. Tell neighbor, I don't know what he said, but it sound right. Go ahead and tell him, I don't even know, but it sound, he be studying. I don't know. I told y'all he be studying stuff. I told y'all. He got degrees. I told y'all. Make that make sense, pastor. The lawyer, he could, he could talk it, but he couldn't walk it. Come here, come here, come here. Jesus replied with a story. A Jewish man traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes. They beat him up and left him half dead beside the road. Come here. Y all, y all, y nine o'clock. Y'all need a double shot because y'all missing it. A Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho. Watch this. He was attacked. He was stripped. He was beaten and left him half dead. The thief comes not. But to steal to kill and destroy uh, but, but, but the thief made a mistake he left them half dead <sighs> let's have church real quick go ahead and push somebody and tell them there's still a pulse go ahead and tell them uh, uh, devil you should have killed me when you had a chance I, I survived the attack I don't know who I'm preaching to I, I survived the stripping I, I survived the beating I, I survived the, the proof that I'm here is a testimony all by itself I'm proof that no weapon formed against me will be able to prosper if I'm half dead it means I'm 100% alive I, who am I preaching to stand up and sit back down and say I'm still alive I as long as I am breathing, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I will live. By chance, a priest came along. When he saw the man lying there, he, he, he came over. He saw the man lying there. He was like, ooh, ooh. Cross back to the other side. Come here, come here. The priest had apathy. The Levite walked over and was like, oh, man, that 
had to hurt. All right, man. All right, all right, all right. Priest had apathy. The Levite had sympathy. Priest represents the law. The law could legislate me, but the law couldn't lift me. That's why grandma said I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry from the waters he. Then despised, then a despised Samaritan. Jesus is so smooth. A despised Samaritan. Who said despised? Who said that? You over here in my message. A despised Samaritan came along, and when he saw the man, he felt compassion. A despised Samaritan. If you knew the, 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 the salvific value of the word despised, you would have knocked your neighbor's weave right off the track. I, I said a despised Samaritan. Pastor, why should I shout over despised? Because Isaiah 53 and 3 says he was despised and rejected. He's a man of sorrows acquainted with deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. Who is Isaiah talking about? Jesus. He's a despised Samaritan. The problem with Samaritans come here is that they're half-breeds. <laughs> There's a dichotomy within Samaritans. But, but, but have you ever realized that Jesus is the dichotomy? Yeah, come here. Come here. In Jesus, you have divinity and humanity. He's 100% God and 100% man at the same time. His, his humanity gets hungry, but his divinity says, I'm the bread of life. His humanity gets thirsty, but his divinity says, if you drink of the water that I give, you'll never thirst again. His humanity falls asleep on the boat, but his divinity wakes up and speaks to storms and says, peace be still. He's the lion and the lamb. He's the alpha and the omega. He's the first and the last. He, 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 he has a hypostatic union. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged him. The priest had apathy. The Levite had sympathy. But the Samaritan had empathy. <laughs> apathy, don't care. Sympathy, ah. Uh, empathy, I'm going to put myself in your position. Pastor, where should my ministry begin? At the place of your misery? You should be able to go back to where you were stuck and be able to like, I relate to you. And so I'm going to pull you out. How you in the suburbs when God raised you in the hood? Every now and again, you got to get your armor and go back to the hood and pull somebody else out of where God brought you from. The man couldn't get to the Samaritan, so the Samaritan got to the man. When I couldn't get to Jesus, Jesus got to me. The Bible says he poured wine in his wounds. You know, wine is reflective of the blood of Jesus Christ. When, when sin comes for you, it will wound you. But is there anybody who knows that the blood of Jesus has the power? It reaches the highest mountain. It flows to the lowest valley. To push somebody and say, what can wash away my sins? Go ahead and tell them, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. When I couldn't get out of my situation Jesus got in the situation with me wine blood oil Holy Spirit you will receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you the next day he handed the innkeeper two silver coins telling him take care of this man if his bill runs higher than this I'll pay you the next time I'm here now, which of these would you say was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by bandits? The man replied, the one who showed him mercy. Then Jesus said, yes, now go and do the same. Everybody stand up right now. Since Jesus walked toward us, now it's our turn to take the Jesus that we have and walk towards the world. Watch this, walk past racism. Walk past gender divide. Do you see all these fictitious walls 
that the world has erected to make us feel like stay here, stay here, stay here. Do you realize that the world is ripe for revival? The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Who's ready to take the gospel to somebody else? No, straight up. When you get to heaven, who's your plus one? Lift up your hands right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, forgive me for being apathetic. God, sometimes the reason why I don't want to care is because the last time I cared, I got hurt. God, I'm so wounded that I interpret their rejection as your rejection. God, give me the courage to know that I'm already loved. I'm already chosen. I'm already accepted in the beloved. God, give me boldness to come before your presence. God, 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 let our church not just be apathetic. Don't let us be sympathetic, but Lord, let us be empathetic. God, get us out of our comfort zone. God, God, let us be representatives of you. God, the world is waiting on us to walk this way. God, use our church mightily. Don't let us be the selfish church. Let us be the selfless church. God, over the next two weeks, God, we're investing uh, close to six figures to turn this city upside down. God, it is an honor. It is a privilege to be your hands and your feet. God, when people encounter us, let them encounter and experience you. The world is waiting on us and they're asking us to walk this way. Give us power and authority. In Jesus' name we pray. Give God the loudest praise for our church.